Hi everyone and welcome to learn A-level biology for free with Miss Estrick. So here's one of the requested videos in the subscribers fortnight and it is on meiosis for A-level biology. If you are new here then click the subscribe button to keep up to date with all the latest videos and I hope you find this helpful today and if you do give it a thumbs up. So meiosis is a type of cell division. You would have learned about meiosis and mitosis at GCSE, but at A-level you go into it in more detail, learning how the variation is actually introduced. So meiosis produces daughter cells which are genetically different, so introducing variation, which is the opposite of mitosis. It involves two nuclear divisions, which we can see in this diagram. We start off here with our parent cell, the original cell. It divides once and then it divides twice. So those are our two nuclear divisions. And as a result, we end up with four haploid daughter cells. So haploid meaning you only have one set of the chromosomes. And if we look back at our parent cell here before interphase, you can see we have two copies of the longer chromosome, one blue, one red, and two copies of this short chromosome, one blue, one red. But at the end of meiosis, we have our four daughter cells, but each one only has one copy of each chromosome. So one long, one short. So we describe these as being haploid cells, whereas the parent cell is diploid because it has two copies. So that's what this diagram here is just showing us, a basic overview of meiosis, our parent cell. Interface is actually within the cell cycle rather than meiosis, but that's when the chromosomes would double, and then we would have round one, round two of our division. So let's have a look at then how this variation is introduced. There's two mechanisms that occur to introduce the variation. Firstly, independent segregation of the homologous chromosomes, and the second is crossing over between the homologous chromosomes. Now, both of these happen in the first division of meiosis. So in meiosis 1, between this stage here and creating these two cells here, this is when independent segregation and crossing over will be occurring. So independent segregation first. In meiosis 1, homologous pairs will be lining up opposite each other at the equator, which just means the middle of the cell. And when we say homologous pair, that means two chromosomes which have exactly the same genes on them, but they'll have different alleles. So your maternal and paternal versions of the chromosome. And that's what we can see here. They're lining up opposite each other at the equator. But it's random which side of the equator they end up. They'll always be in their pairs, but you could have all of the paternal chromosomes on one side and all of the maternal chromosomes on the other. Or it could be random. You could have some paternal, some maternal on either side. And every single time they line up at the equator, it's completely random which side they end up lying on. So when that first nuclear division occurs, you'll have the pairs being separated to either side of the cell. So then in the cells here, we can see you'll only have one copy of each of those homologous pairs. Now, if we think about this in terms of um, possible combinations then that you could end up with, there aren't many possible combinations in this example that I'm showing you here, because I'm only showing you two um, homologous pairs of chromosomes. But you can actually use a mathematical formula to work out how many possible combinations there are for which chromosomes you end up with in your gametes. And that is two to the power of n. Now we use two because we're talking about homologous pairs, and that means you have two chromosomes each time. N is the number of homologous pairs which you have. So for a human, we have pairs of chromosomes, that's why it's a two, but we have 23 pairs of chromosomes. So if we want to work out how many possible different combinations we could make in um, the gametes, it would be 2 to the power of 23. And that means we have over 8 million possible combinations of which chromosome of the homologous pairs we'll have in the gametes. 
So already, just considering independent segregation, this accounts for creating over 8 million different possible gametes or different combinations of chromosomes in the gametes, which is a huge amount of variation. Now, that's not the only thing that introduces variation. There is also crossing over. Crossing over happens at the same stage. It's in meiosis one when these homologous pairs line up opposite each other at the equator. And here we can actually see demonstrated the homologous pairs. They've got the same genes represented by these same letters, but they have different versions. They have different alleles. The paternal one here is shown with the dominant allele um, and the maternal is shown with the recessive. Now, what happens is sometimes when these homologous pairs line up opposite each other, they actually get tangled and twisted. And it's these chromatids that start to twist around each other and get tangled. When that happens, that puts tension on the chromatids and actually causes part of the chromatid to snap and break off. Now, where they break off, they're able to recombine. And often what happens is it breaks off, but it recombines on the other chromosome of the pair. And we can see here what that means is they have swapped sections of their chromatids. And that results in a new combination of alleles on this chromatid um, and on the whole chromosome. Because we now have capital A for dominant, lowercase a for recessive, and the opposite over there. So as a result, in the gametes, we end up with new combinations of alleles. So this is just showing us again, we've got a homologous pair of chromosomes. You can see where they start to cross over the chromatids and you'd have to be specific saying it's the chromatids which stop over and it's the chromatid which breaks and recombines. And as a result, we've now got new combinations of alleles in the gametes. So those are two types of variation. So just to have a summary of meiosis compared to mitosis, Meiosis is two nuclear divisions, whereas mitosis is only one. Because we have two divisions, we actually only end up with one set of chromosomes, which we call haploid cells. Whereas we have one round of division in mitosis, so you get two sets of chromosomes still, which is a diploid cell. So di di meaning two. Meiosis introduces genetic variation through independent segregation and crossing over whereas mitosis results in genetically identical cells or clones. And we have a very brief summary here just showing that. However, in this diagram, we don't see the um, impact of crossing over because they still all have exactly the same combination of alleles there. Now, the next thing which is on the specification linked to meiosis is they state that they could give you a completely unknown life cycle of an organism. And you have to draw on the diagram where meiosis is occurring. And what they're checking is, do you know that meiosis involves a diploid parent cell becoming a haploid cell? So all you have to look for in the diagram is where cells go from being diploid, which can be represented as 2N, meaning two copies of each chromosome. So they go from being diploid to becoming haploid, meaning only one copy of each chromosome. So, for example, we've got this here for algae. We've got lots of different stages in their life cycle, but at each point they're showing you whether it's haploid, diploid, haploid, 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 and so on. And sometimes it's a bit misleading because they say um, gametes are being made, or we've got here a haploid gamete. And that can lead to confusion because students might jump straight away just to see Okay, it's a gamete, let's label it there. But what you're looking for is where you have a 2N or diploid cell becoming a haploid cell. And here that is, so we can see it's labeled as meiosis. Another example over here, sorry, that version's a bit blurry, so we've got a different example here, which is much more crisp to see. Um, this time it's in creating spores for a particular organism and we're told that all of this part of the diagram is 2N diploid and this part is haploid and where that change from diploid to haploid occurs is this section of the life cycle so you'd be labelling on that meiosis is this section. So you don't need to read any of the other labels apart from haploid and diploid because it's 2N 
to n. So they'll always give you an example where it is misleading, where you can see here they're creating gametes, but for some organisms, they actually create gametes by mitosis. It's only um, certain animals like humans, which will do it by meiosis. So ignore the creating of gametes. You're looking for 2n to n. So the final bit is there's even more variation introduced from meiosis, and that is the resulting gametes will then fuse in fertilization. So the sperm and the egg will fuse. So we already said in terms of the gametes, there were two to the power of n possible combinations of chromosomes in the gametes. So for humans, we said there was over 8 million, two to the power of 23. But then we have a random egg, a random sperm fusing. And because it's random which egg and sperm fuse, we actually have two to the power of n squared possible combinations of chromosomes which then gives us a huge amount of variation. So a huge range of possible combinations of chromosomes you could get in the resulting organism. So for humans, we can see that's 7.04 um, times 10 to the power of 13 possible combinations. And this is why you don't get humans which are genetically identical unless they are identical twins. So this is before we even take into consideration the variation introduced by crossing over. So in reality, you actually have even more variation than that there. So meiosis, the key takeaway from this is it introduces genetic variation. And that is it for meiosis A-level. So head over to missestrick.com for practice questions. And you can go to Miss Estrick Instagram as well for daily questions as well. If you have found this helpful today, please give it a thumbs up below.